Good morning, and welcome to another Tuesday tune-in. Uh, I hope everyone's doing all right. Uh, I have to say I've been pretty impressed by a lot of the thoughtful self-reflections and self-assessments uh, in this unit that we're in currently, or we've been in, um, on accessibility and inclusivity. Uh, some of your perspectives have been eye-opening in terms of where you're coming from, your experiences in that regard, and I found them uh, uh, illuminating and elucidating uh, in terms of my read. So I'm just re really thankful for you to share those experiences with me. Uh, I wanted to, this week for our Tuesday Tune In, talk a about a couple things. First, I wanna try to clear up a little confusion. And the second thing I wanna do is um, talk about a neat feature that you may not have been aware of. You might have seen it and not known what it is, but it can be very helpful for you, especially coming here very soon in the near future. Um, in your courses in terms of keeping track of how your students are doing and where they are in ultra courses. So I wanted to take some time and talk a little bit about that with you. So let's start with uh, some questions. Uh, and then in the end, we're gonna focus on what's coming next week or this thir for this Thursday's due date and then the following Sunday. So uh, let's take a look at um, uh, one thing and that's inserting that image from this past uh, from this thing that was due on Sunday, and it's okay if you haven't submitted it yet, that maybe this you're a little confused, you're a little behind, and that's okay. Uh, but I wanted to walk you through how that process works, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna access the template course, and the template course will look very familiar to you, and it's gonna look exactly like the template courses you're in, uh, in essence. And I am gonna scroll down to my modules, and in that applications of subject matter module that I've been talking about with you, I'm gonna click it, and I am going to create a new document. And that's part of the assignment, right? So I'm gonna click in here and create a document. And I'm even gonna be very silly in my naming and call it, oh, you know, image assignment, you know, right? So in that regard, I'm gonna make it visible to my students so they see it. And I'm going to choose add content. Now, uh, you'll be familiar with the editor, uh, the editor that's in all of these wonderful um, ultra courses. It's a simple uh, but complete editor that makes sure that we try to stay as mobily friendly and inclusive as we can whilst doing our normal day-to-day -day in a web environment. So uh, the editor is designed to make sure that the content that you put in your course is friendly to those students that might be uh, approaching it from a mobile device. But at the same time, it comes with the bells and whistles you need to just do your normal thing, right? So in this case, for instance, um, I am going to really quickly go and borrow some text. And I go, when I think of borrowing text, I go to uh, one of my favorite places in the world, and that's the lorem ipsum generator. And I go, and I'm going to uh, copy some text to place it, right? Now, what I will do now is paste that text in, and you'll see here, you know, it, the text comes in inheriting the, um, the color that it, from the page. So I want to get rid of that, right? So I highlight the text and I can click my nice little clear format button, which is right here. And that makes it black, right? And then I can come in and insert an image, right? So I can come in here and uh, attach my, uh, knowing that when I do insert images now, everything's kind of done through the attachment button, files and images. So I click on my attachment button which will open up my um, uh, 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 window for images, right? So I can get in there and look at an image that I want to uh, uh, place in here. So in this case, let's say I wanted to uh, add in a, a graphic, right? So I'm gonna click it, choose it, and hit open. It will then come in and say, okay, Jacob, I'm inserting this local file. Well, we need to think about alt text, and that's where that whole discussion this week around um, are my images accessible uh, in that self-assessment workbook? Do I have alt text, that alternative text that screen readers used to, um, uh, to, to interpret what those images are? And so in this case, I know that this is the instructional uh, design and, or not, excuse me, instructional development and support update graphic, right? And then I have options. Do I want to allow students to view and download? Do I just want them to view or do I want them to download only? In this case, they don't really need to download this picture. It's just for their viewing pleasure. So I would click view thusly and then hit save. And then what it does is it places that image right in my course. Then underneath, I could come in 
and, and book, uh, bookend that text. Again, notice that it inherited that coloring. Um, and I can clear it with that clear button right up here. But uh, you'll notice now, because I put in that alt text, it tells me automatically up here in my ally score that I'm doing pretty well, right? I've got 100% uh, accessibility score. Uh, that's, that's pretty exciting so far because I did that wonderful thing with my alt text. But that's how you insert an image uh, in, your, in your course. And then I hit save it, and then it would show up right there. So there's that image assignment that I was talking about, right? That's the, so for those of you that had questions, may have had a little confusion, hopefully uh, that might lend itself to something that will help you in regards to uh, taking care of um, that, particular, that particular event. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna delete it because this is a template course that I use to copy out of and I don't need to have that. So the next thing I wanna show you is something you might've noticed in the cohort course. And it's something that I think is going to be beneficial for your students. And that is progress tracking. I have it turned on in this course. As the instructor, I have to initiate that. I have to turn it on. But when I do turn it on and I uh, access the student preview for my course, it does something for me. And what it does is it allows students to keep track of where they are in the course, but also maybe makes them feel good about how far they've come. So everything a student clicks on inside the course gets noticed. So for example, as a student where I to click on course information and look at different things like, okay, I want to look in here. There's the syllabus. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's the syllabus, right? I come in, you're going to notice it puts a little half click on it that says that, okay, the students looked at this. Now, if I, as the student want to keep track of myself, Hey, that I've looked at it, it tells me that's what I've done. I've looked at it. That's what that half circle means. But if I want to say that I've looked at it completely and I, I understood it, I can check the whole thing off. And so it's kind of like a way for students to keep track of where they are in the course. Uh, same thing when, whenever they click on something, it automatically will add in that they've looked at that particular thing, right? And so, uh, it, it does it here. You'll notice again, um, everything that I click on, it shows up like that. So uh, this is a great way uh, for your students to know where they are and know what's going on. Now, the neat thing is in the coming month or so, uh, you as the instructor are going to be able to, in the next, I think it's like three possibly months is when this is coming. Um, you as the instructor, based upon these students using these things and clicking into the folders and then clicking them as complete. So you'll be able to know if they've looked at it or if they've completed it, you'll be able to track that from your analytics tab in your course. It's not there yet, but it's coming very soon. So I thought I'd give you a preview of what this does for you and your students so that you get a feel for how you can help your students stay engaged and know where they are. So as they seem to maybe fall away, uh, in terms of um, what they're doing in the course, you can check on these types of things and know where they are in the course, and that's value. So this is coming soon, uh, but you can turn it on now, and the students can use it to keep track of their progress. And I like it for that very reason. Uh, I do think that um, there's value in it, but the important thing is what you need to do is to work with your students to make them understand how it works and how they keep track of it. So what you could do is what I just did, record yourself in your student preview account keeping track of where you are, marking things off as complete, and then embed that video in your course, maybe using uh, the Kaltura media mashup, right? When you share your screen and using the Kaltura capture, or maybe doing what I did, just uploading a video that I've just captured on my computer uh, to YouTube and embedding it, whichever works for you uh, is gonna be fine. So that's, uh, that's that in terms of what's going on there. So what, what I wanna do is I'm gonna exit my preview and I'm going to delete my student data because I don't need I don't need it at this point. But what I want to do now is go back to that um, syllabus, and I want to bring up what's coming, right? So um, you just came out of module three, and that's here. You have a discussion this week that you're doing called the Elements of uh, Design discussion, which. It's kind of cool because it puts you in a, a frame of reference where you're making a post um, to a friend about what you've learned about uh, about um, elements of design. About uh, and you'll see the article that you'll want to read and and all those good things, universal design and 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 fun stuff like that. But you'll make a post like you're trying to share with a friend, and then you'll reply to colleagues about about said cool stuff. But that being said, uh, coming up Thursday, besides that discussion.
uh, posting that's due. You have um, student learning outcomes. And where this is kind of, uh, sometimes it seems like it's, well, why, why do we do this anyway? Uh, I really think that there is value in connecting students, um, uh, not only connecting students, but connecting yourself to the why of what is happening in your in your courses, right? So you'll notice that in every one of our um, our, our wonderful modules in the in the course, that we've taken the time to place um, uh, objectives and outcomes for you. And each one of these um, uh, deals directly with the content. So it aligns to the curriculum, right? So uh, this is kind of what you'll want to do in your own way, right? And so while um, you may have like mandated objectives that go in your syllabi, which are important that you need to put in there, unit level objectives help your students remember why they're there and can, can, can connect um, the, the, the things that they're doing, the readings that they're doing, the activities they're doing back to the importance of, hey, I said that when you do this course, these are the things you're getting out of it, and here's how you're getting those things out of it. So you'll note in every one of our sessions uh, in here, you'll notice first the action words, so pay attention to those. Pay attention to um, what we're trying to get them to do. We want them to be actionable, we want them to be measurable. Um, uh, and not just student will understand. I mean, how you quantify understanding, right? Or, uh, or qualify understanding. So um, keep that in mind. That's what's coming up. Remember, uh, the, the, and I just noticed this morning here within the last couple of seconds, um, I had a virtual office discussion come in. So I'm gonna go take a look at that um, in just a second and look at it. But what I would tell you, uh, is um, uh, use that virtual office. Should you have any questions, we're checking it uh, every day, a weekday, uh, tw within 24 hours during the week. I hope that um, you're getting something out of this. I hope that it's meaningful for you. I hope that you're finding ways, maybe even small ways, to make changes in your courses that matter to you and your students. I hope again that you're having a great week and I look forward to seeing what you're doing online. I, I, I love going in this week and seeing the pictures and the courses that y'all have uploaded. Uh, there are some great photos in there of like uh, a desert picture that I really like that scenery, the beach, uh, a couple of others that I liked as well. So anywho, uh, that being said, thank you so much for sticking with it. Remember, uh, if you have any questions, uh, this is a no stress, no pressure environment. You feel free to ask those questions. We're going to do our best to answer them in a way that's helpful for you. I hope you have a great day and a great week. Take care.